What's up guys? So today we're making a video talking about elite trainer boxes and whether they are good investments or not. And the answer I am going to come to are modern ETBs are absolute dog shit. Now the reason I'm making this video, I got a comment on one of my old videos about the products that I am stopping, stopping investing in and that I'm stopping wasting my money on. That doesn't even make sense. The grant, I'm so tilted by the fact I have to make this video. I can't even speak English, but our boy Mr. Wizard 65 writes, wrong on ETB performance, ETBs over all sets since 2014 have an average CAGR, which stands for compound annual growth rate, learned that, that was pretty cool, of um, 68% versus a booster box CAGR, same time period, of 43%. I replied basically saying it's very disingenuous to compare products from the XY era to modern sets and Obviously, anyone who watched the video I made knew I was talking about modern products. I mean, it's kind of hard to stop investing in something that's 10 years old. It's kind of hard to find those products at uh, MSRP or even around that. So I think most people with a functioning prefrontal cortex knew I was talking about modern product. But whatever, uh, we'll go with it. And you know what? I was going to let this go until the guy basically said that um, I'm leading people astray without showing any facts. So today... I am, I'm bringing the facts and uh, hopefully I won't lead any of you astray. So what we're going to do in this video, I have all the Sword and Shield era elite trainer boxes and booster boxes, and we're going to compare which ones have done better over time. Now, some of you may say, Grayson, why are you not including Sun and Moon or XY or Scarlet and Violet? Scarlet and Violet is just way too new, and I don't think the data for that is very relevant. Uh, when it comes to XY, but more importantly, when it comes to XY and Sun and Moon, there's two reasons. The first is that XY and Sun and Moon product, especially XY, the Elite Trainer Boxes, were extremely short printed. They were very hard to find, uh, especially after the first few years that they were out. And you can see that reflected in some of the prices, like some of the ETBs are, what, five, ten thousand dollars 10000 So to lump in all ETBs and compare it to all booster boxes is just incredibly disingenuous when this was a newer product in the XY era that no one really wanted that became incredibly scarce and now has an insane premium on it. When we're talking about modern product and modern investing, this has absolutely zero relevance. The other reason uh, is that most of these products that I'm showing you today, and most, we'll, we'll see in the first two ETBs, which almost aren't even relevant to the discussion as well, but the first two Sword and Shield ETBs were pre-COVID, or essentially around the time where the boom of Pokemon was just about to start. So these products, again, were short printed. They weren't very, uh, they weren't very abundant in society. So again, there's a premium on them. When we look at basically any product post-COVID, mass produced, a lot of it's just, you know, I wouldn't call it shit, but it's, it's, it's very much out there. It's very easy to find. And the modern prices and growth rates reflect that. So for those reasons that it was short printed, it was pre-COVID, so all of those factors in play, it, it's a completely different discussion to the one we're going to have today and moving forward in modern investing. And that's why I have such a big problem with this type of comment because I don't think I'm leading people astray by telling them not to buy uh, modern regular ETBs. So we're going to get into it. Basically what we have here, ETBs on the left, booster boxes on the right. We have Sword and Shield Base all the way to Silver Tempest. And what I did is I took current or MSRP $39.99 and for booster boxes $143.64. Again, USD prices. Took the current market price from TCG Player today. If there was two booster or two um, elite trainer boxes so like Chilling Rain or Evolving Skies, I added up both of them, the prices of both, and I divided by two, so I basically just took the average. And then we looked at the annualized ROI. So how I did this, I'll give you an example. Uh, say Evolving Skies came out August 27th, 2021, which it did. I would come in here to this calculator, I'd put in the MSRP, $39.99, I'd put in the current market price of $96.39 for an Elite Trainer box. I'd start August 27th, 2021, and I put the current date August or April 12th 2024 calculated it and we'd get our annualized return of 39.77 percent and then that would go into our calculation here now you're going to see in brackets uh, there's different numbers we're going to get to that in a minute 
Uh, but first, well, actually, we can just talk about this now. Basically, I took 70% of MSRP and did the same calculation. And the reason I did this, I did this for booster boxes as well. But the reason I did this is that a lot of people probably were going to say that you could get product below MSRP. And I definitely agree with that. So I thought 30% was a fair number. Again, it's not going to make a huge difference uh, overall when we compare things, but, uh, you know, when we contrast them. But I figured might as well just throw in a second calculation to try and make it more accurate to real day life and what people could actually buy. So when we get into this, start off with Sword and Shield Base MSRP $39.99. Current market price $61.26 gives us an annualized ROI of 10.75%. If we take the 70% calculation, it would be 20.62%. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these for this. You can see on the screen for yourself, but we'll go through the first one. So again, Rebel Clash MSRP $39.99. Current market price $147.09. Insane. Annualized return of 39.05%. Darkness Ablaze, same MSRP $35.94 or $35.94. Current market price negative 2.87% annualized ROI. So actually negative there over the years. Vivid Voltage, Current market price 40.59. That gives us 0.44% annualized ROI. Battle styles 39.99 MSRP. 36.37. Current market price negative 3.05% annualized ROI. Moving forward into some of the better sets, Chilling Rain, same MSRP 46.72, 5.67% our annualized ROI. Evolving Skies, 96.39, gives us 39.77% annualized ROI. Outside of Rebel Clash, well, actually, including Rebel Clash, this is the highest performing, but outside of Rebel Clash, it's really the only one that has done anything. Uh, pretty impressive, almost 40% annualized ROI there. Fusion Strike, again, same MSRP, 42.31 current market value, 2.36% annualized ROI. Brilliant Stars, 36.34 current market price, negative 4.4%. Astral Radiance 3709 is negative 3.93%. Lost Origin 3528 is negative 7.57%. Uh, 757, terrible plane, by the way. Uh, side note. Uh, Silver Tempest 3051, 17, negative 17.36% 17 annualized ROI. So when we add all these up, divide by 12, we get our average 4.91% uh, ROI, annualized ROI return. If we take MSRP, if we take 70% of MSRP and do the calculation, it comes out to 20.84%. So not bad, not bad. A lot of it is being carried by Rebel Clash, however, uh, Sword and Shield Base, and obviously Evolving Skies. So really, again, I, I talked about, I referenced this in the beginning, the first two Elite Trainer boxes, Rebel Clash and Sword and Shield Base. This was pre-COVID, pre pre-boom. Uh, short printed, you, you don't see too much of them out there, and that's the reason why we have such high values on these currently. But before I go any further, I just want to jump in here and say 19.9% of you guys are subscribed. We're almost at 20%, almost. I appreciate all you guys who have subscribed. If you find value in this content and you want to give me a follow, I really appreciate it, so thank you very much. Moving on over to the booster boxes, we have Sword and Shield Base, MSRP 143.64. I'm not going to continue saying the MSRP, it's the same, you guys can see it on the screen. Current market price 265.34 gives us an annualized return of 1540 or 1582, excuse me, Rebel Clash. Current market 219.61, 11.34% annualized ROI. Darkness Ablaze 146.70, current market price 0.58% annualized return. Vivid Voltage 131.93, negative 2.46% Vivid Voltage not doing well. Battle Styles $112.03 currently, negative 7.79% annualized ROI. Chilling Rain, this is when we start getting into the better ones again. Uh, 203.25 currently, that's 13.1% annualized ROI. Evolving Skies $676.71, that's an 80.38% annualized ROI, insane. Fusion Strike, $231.78, that's 21.9% annualized ROI. Brilliant Stars, $165.13, that's 6.77% return. Uh, Astral Radiance, $167.78, we just saw Astral Radiance sell out on the Pokemon Center. 8.62% ROI, Lost Origin, $176.70, making huge moves lately, that's 13.9% ROI. 
And then Silver Tempest at $138.83 currently is negative 2.37% return. So when we add all these up, we get an annualized ROI of 13.31%. If we take 70% of MSRP, which we did over here, with the ETB is 70% of MSRP is like $100.55, so pretty much $100. Uh, we get a 31.04% annualized return on investment. So when you look at the data, guys, it is pretty clear when we're talking about modern products, booster boxes are outperforming ETBs. Taking data and taking it out of context is just ridiculous, like this guy was trying to do. Like, no one gives a shit about X, Y, and Sun and Moon returns in a conversation when we're talking about buying modern ETB. So that's one thing. But just to make another thing clear, hypothetically, say, say these numbers were the exact same. Okay, say you got the exact same returns from an ETB as you did a booster box. Which one would you want to buy still? Which one? Would you want to buy an ETB or would you want to buy a booster box? Me? I'm still going to be buying a booster box. Why? Well, with my fancy example down here, right, with really solid math. So I put in an Evolving Skies ETB at $100 and I put in an Evolving Skies booster box at $500. Now I know this is a very not accurate price, okay? Evolving Skies ETBs are closer to $700. But for the sake of math, okay, so actually what this will do is it'll make my point even stronger, okay? But hypothetically in the future, you want to sell your Evolving Skies ETB. You throw it up on eBay, you sell it, ignore, ignore fees from eBay. You know, it's going to be about $10 to ship, okay? And again, this is a round number, maybe it's five, six dollars. But when we're talking about shipping an ETB and shipping a booster box, the booster box might be a bit heavier, I'm not exactly sure, but it, they're going to be very similar in the cost to ship the product, okay? It's not like you're going to have a, a tenth of the, the cost with an ETB. No, it's going to be very similar. ETBs are larger, more dimensional. So hypothetically, just say $10, right? $10 of $100 is 10%. So you're going to be spending 10% of the value of the product on shipping alone. With an ET or with a booster box, if it's $500 and you're paying $10 for shipping, that's 2%. If it's a $700 box, that's like what? 1.4% or even less? Like, I, I don't know. My math is bad. But the higher, the higher the box price or the higher the value of the item, the less you're going to be paying overall as a percentage in shipping costs. So if people want to argue that an ETB is better, even if these prices were the same, again, even if you saw the same returns, you're still getting screwed over because you're going to be paying more to get rid of the product in the future. Now, I know some people are going to say, well, I can just sell it locally. I don't have to pay shipping, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I mean, you can do that, right? But the reality is when you're, say you're in a town of a million people, right? Your audience essentially is a million buyers. Like that, that's who can buy your item. That, that's your customer base, a million people. If I throw a box up on eBay and I put global shipping, my audience is 7 billion people, okay? And that might be, you know, maybe too extreme. Like maybe I don't sell globally, but even if I sell only in Canada and North America, my audience is now 330, 340 million, maybe even more than that at this point, illegal immigration and mass immigration in general. We won't get into that, but okay. Anyways, my point is if you're selling something locally, it's gonna be much more difficult for you to move it. And if you're in a big city, that might be a lot easier than someone who lives in a small city. So in that case, good for you. But you still have to find someone who's going to want to buy the ETB. And again, online, it's just a lot more pragmatic. It's much easier to do. And I, 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 in the future, I don't think a lot of people will be able to sell their stuff locally. And if they do, they are going to be taking a price cut as well. So you got to you got to consider that, right? You always get the premium online. It's very difficult to get 100% of eBay price if you're selling in person. So just keep that in mind as well. And I think that's all I have for this video. That's all I really wanted to talk about. Again, just to conclude. Uh, MSRP, if we take modern Sword and Shield ETBs, is 4.91% annualized ROI. Uh, if you take 70% of MSRP, it's 20.84%. When we look at booster boxes, if we look at MSRP, it's 13.31%. And if we take 70% of that, it's 31.04%. So booster boxes are essentially outperforming ETBs in annualized ROI by about 10%, you know, give or take. And then when you talk about shipping costs in the future, it's going to be much much more profitable to sell booster boxes, in my opinion, just based on the math. So that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you guys for watching and subscribing. If you have any critique about this video, feel free to leave in the comments down below. Also, thank you guys for supporting. If you're uh, doing shopping on eBay or Hobbiesville, some of you have been using the affiliate links. I really appreciate it. It helps out the channel a lot. But even if you're not buying anything, you know, all of you guys being here, I just really appreciate it. 
Uh, it, it's crazy how fast we're growing. So thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe wherever you are in the world, and I'll catch you in the next one.